Welcome to another episode of Ether Gamer Radio. Ride with us on this gaming information highway into the gaming future. Buckle up, strap in, put your controllers in the gaming upright position. What is up? This is X Priest back again. Show 70. What is up, fellas? It's been a minute. What's going on? This is Soul Acoustic. And what's up? It's Tech Support Broke. Oh. Uh, tech Support? Tech Support. I, I that's right. I just helped uh, Soul get back onto his uh, Pokemon account. Yeah, that's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we no, go. No, no, that's definitely true. Uh, so uh, what's been up, guys? I mean, it's been a minute. We, you know, we had all kind of different things going on. Me and Soul did the uh, Red Dead GameStop uh, extravaganza, which was yeah. extremely fun. It was tight. Yep. And then we had the Halloween special. But uh, Soul, so what did you think about the whole Red Dead GameStop uh, scene? It was good. It was cool. I had a good time. Everybody seemed to have a good time with us. I'm glad that, um, you know, there were some people willing to talk to us and, and, uh, and you know, just talk about their passion for the game. So. Cool. Yeah, dude, I got to give you some props for that work that you did because you are a great interviewer. You should definitely be doing that more, man. Uh, that's good to know. I didn't think I did that good, but good. <laughs> no, well, yeah, it, it, it felt natural. Like there was there was good rapport there with the people. Like your charisma shined through naturally. So it was just it was nice to hear that. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then also, so uh, the uh, the Halloween episode. What'd you guys think? Yes. Oh, sight. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh. The uh, the 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 first few stories were a little, wah, but after that, like the the ones towards the end there, he did save the best for last. There were some pretty good ones there. Oh, cool! And that was courtesy of Darkness Prevails. Yes, thanks, um, dude. All the gamers out there that uh, wanted to hear uh, creepy stories and all that good stuff, uh, he does it well as far as um you know the whole putting it, the stories together and uh, the narration and all that good stuff. But uh, narration going on. Yep. But uh, enough with all that. So, um, so what have you guys been up to? Straight chilling like a villain. Work. That too. Oh, damn. Yeah, just hard working, man. I've been, uh, I don't know, since before we recorded the last time, I've just been working really hard to try and, and get this new job figured out. And it's been kicking my butt. Like, I've been getting home, you know, like after an 11, 12 hour shift, maybe get an hour or two to, to, to eat, take a shower, and then pass out and do it again. And I've been doing that for like the past three weeks. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, once you learn and get it down, you'll be good. And that was Friday for me. I, I feel a lot better about it now. Like, I was really stressing out because I was like, oh, man, I don't know if I can do this job. But I'm um, comfortable with the uh, the driving that I do. They send me all over the place. Uh, and, you know, now I'm, like, driving through Midtown with this big old truck like it's nothing. Okay, cool. That's good, yeah. man. That's really good. All right. Well, how, what about you, Sol? Samo, Samo? Uh, just working and playing video games and doing music. And yeah, yeah. Doing that I saw stuff. that you were on stage, man. That's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had a show. I've had a few shows in between um, the last time we potted and now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you said potted. Uh, it's it's been good. It's been really good. Having a good time. So Getting okay, it. yeah, I just been uh, myself. Just been changing uh, our uh, situation up uh, in the studio. Just getting uh, you know a Scarlet box to <gasps> Scarlet. have better audio and uh, be able to record multiple tracks at one time with no problem. That's the issue I was having with my just standard mixer going in from USB. So um, now everybody's on their own separate track. So if broke is low, I'll be able to turn them up and all that good stuff. That's so. right. I am I am no longer background broke. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that background broke. All right. So it's been a minute, people. So uh, we guys are going to hit you with our social bumper and uh, get out, tell a friend, all the good stuff. We'll be back. We'd like to thank our listeners from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and Podbean, and all podcast hosting sites. Thanks for listening to Ether Gamer Radio. All right, it is time for what you've been playing, and... uh, well, who wants to go first? Because I know what uh, me and Soul has been playing. <laughs> I guess I'll go first before you guys go into your deep dive. Okay, go ahead. Me, uh, I have been playing a lot of Pokemon Go because that's all I have time for. 
<laughs> but the times are changing. Uh, a little peek behind the screen here, but once we're done with this early recording that we're doing, I'm going to get behind the sticks and get some time in with my Xbox because it's been a minute. Oh, wow. You haven't got but, that uh, Switch yet? Yeah, we we just got done with a, uh, a Halloween event. Uh, as you all know, it was just Halloween. We had an episode, and all the ghost Pokemon were everywhere. It was just constant ghost Pokemon on every corner. Uh, special ghost events. Uh, I didn't get to, to collect one of the um, the special quest Pokemon because I wasn't about to go look for 108 Pokemon. I ain't got time for that. But it was it was pretty cool to be able to evolve my perfect Gengar because I uh, for those of you that play the game, you know that if you use a uh, IV stat calculator, you can check to see what percentage your Pokemon are at for battling. And I managed to hatch a perfect Ghastly, which uh, happens to be my favorite chain of Pokemon. So it was kind of nice to get a perfect one. I don't know anything about that. But that's yeah, fine. that was he, he, you, you, you were talking about deep dive. You you <laughs> went you deep into that Pokemon. Um, it, it's all random. Mm. Uh, the, you usually get better perfects from like uh, Pokemon that you get in raids, mm -hmm. or if you hatch a Pokemon. So always keep the ones that you hatch because those ones usually have better stats than the ones that you find in the wild. Oh, that's good to know. Good to mm -hmm. know. Um, I don't know about iPhone, but uh, for you Android users, there's uh, this app called Calky IV, which is a uh, it's like an overlay. Uh, it's a little button. You hit it, and then it scans your screen, and it uh, it records what the stats for your Pokemon are and also takes uh, account of what level you're at, and it tells you what the percentage of that Pokemon is, either 1 to 100. So usually I don't keep anything that's below 80%, just uh, as a general rule, because most of the stuff that's at 80% is, is pretty strong. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know people were still playing Pokemon. So. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's strong. It's alive. Yeah, I, I can assure you you can't do that on iPhone. So. <laughs> well, I think they have something called Poke Genie, but I mean, I don't really use iPhone, so you'll, you're on your own for that one. I know that there's a separate website where you can manually enter everything in, but that might be a lot of work for you. Yeah. But uh, so, uh, Brooke, have you got your uh, your uh, Switch yet? No, I'm saving that for Christmas oh, okay. uh, because the first purchase that I'm going to make now that I've had time to think about what I'm going to do with all this money I'm making <laughs> is... Uh, oh, Buy a TV. Oh, I, nice. I want to get a, a 4K TV. I want to get set up. I'm, I'm under using my Xbox right now. So I think um, all of my funds on Black Friday, instead of splitting them up amongst used games and little random bits and bobbins, I'm just going to go to buy a nice ass TV. Bits and bobbins. You know, <laughs> like Nick yes, Nicks. join us. Join us in the 4K world. I've never owned a bobbin, so. Uh, it's all right. Everybody's got bits. Bobbins <laughs> are a little harder to find. <laughs> so so man where do we where do we go with this uh i don't know i, I was gonna, gonna do like a tag team what you might as playing? well yeah yeah because okay. we've been playing the same things we've been playing you guessed it red, red dead, dead redemption, redemption 2 wow it's like we fused <laughs> that was cool anyway um i guess let's see uh you played more so i'll let you start and then anything i feel you know I could fill in. Well, all I can say is this, because, um, you know, definitely don't want to give this story. Um, mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. how the openness of the world, um, people were complaining about how you were so, uh, in, in the beginning or whatever, you're so, um, I guess, locked into a certain area. Um, but then once you opened up your camp and, uh, you know, you were able to go out into the world and do your own thing. I love how you can do your own thing. This game does not hold your hand. It does not make you go to the main story. Um, or play a particular mission. You can play side missions. You can just, you know, go and talk to the people out in the world, or you can, um, you know, go kill everybody, like I've seen multiple people do. But uh, heathens, yeah. But the game is fantastic. I mean, the the visuals, the uh, the uh, the control. Um, you know, it, it's it's best. It's better than GTA Five for sure. It's. Um, it's it's not quite perfect, but it's still really good, especially for um, for Rockstar. How they because they want you to have weight to your control as far as movement. You, they just don't want you to be able to move and spin on a dime. They want so, you to have uh, Witcher real inertia. level weight. What's that? You say level weight? I said Witcher level weight. Uh, you know how like when you play the Witcher, his body feels a little heavier swinging the swords around. You really have to be more deliberate with your attacks. You can't just like start mashing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, in which you do, this is more of movement and um, yeah. inertia as far as just, you know, spinning on the dime or turning on the dime. I love all the mechanics. Um, a lot of it is so funny because um, Rockstar lets you find how to play the, and use the character. 
I mean, it doesn't tell you that if you press on the Xbox, I'm playing this on the Xbox, if you press less left bumper twice while you have your weapon out, you can actually spin your weapon before you holster it. Yeah. I mean, small little things. If you're if you're on your horse and you spin the left thumbstick around, your horse will actually start to run in a in, in a a perfect circle and then jet off to whatever way with the weight as it as its momentum as it moves forward oh isn't so, that cool yeah yeah. <laughs> said, yeah it's like drift your horse basically yeah, yeah. oh no there mm-hmm. actually is you, drift, you hit yeah. you hit x and i uh or no no you hit uh x and a or something uh, like you that, hit a uh, right, right button and, and uh x and, i think and it x is. Yeah. yeah and, and then he'll like turn yeah, like he'll drift the horse. you know drift the horse a little bit but uh but again the 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 freaking um Cutscenes are hands down probably the best I've seen in any video game as far as dialogue, voice acting. Um, you know, to me, what was up there back in the day was Last of Us and all that. And again, Red Dead 1 was up there too as far as quality with everything. Mm-hmm. But um, it's done freaking damn near perfect. I mean, uh, from you riding on your horse to you just humming, singing a tune. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just the, the whole thing. It's, it's, it's crazy. Incredible game. 10 out of 10. Um, n- no review from us needed um, other than to be talked about, but 10 out of 10, probably uh, the best game in a decade overall. Yeah, it's definitely very, very good. Um, pretty much, I echo pretty much all of Priest's sentiments here. I think um, for me, I just like the the detail to me is really cool. Like as far as just like, when you go to pick up something, it's not just walk by, hit X, and it's in your inventory. Like, he stops, turns, picks it up, puts it in his pocket, like, you know, or whatever, or puts it in his satchel, like, that kind of thing. Um, you, when you're hunting, the hunting mechanics and just how all of that works is pretty cool. Um, once you hunt the animal down, you have to carry it back. You have to put it on your horse. Um, you have options. You, know, you have to take it, you know, to wherever you want to take it soon. Otherwise, it's going to start um, uh, deteriorating and rotting and stuff on the back of the horse. Like, it's just it's very, very detailed and um, it's very cool. Like and when they say like everybody reacts to the things you do, like it's that everyone reacts to the things you do and they'll remember you, too. Um, like uh, a few weekends ago, I was drinking and playing the game and a friend of mine came over and he was like, all right, yeah, so just you can do anything. I was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want, you know. And he's like, oh, shoot these people and do this. Uh, I was running around doing outlaw things and came back, and uh, the whole town was mad at me. The shop dude was like, hey, you can shop here, but don't be in here doing what you were doing last night. Like, you know, it's just stuff like that. It's, it was really, really cool. So, yeah, I, I think the, it's awesome. Um, yeah, the, 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 you, you can see the eight-year mm-hmm. manifestation of this game as far as the detail that they put into it. Because, I mean, no, we're not even touching the surface of all that's here. Yeah, because you have to kind of experience it. It's not like something you could really talk about. You just got to see it. Because, like, you'll be listening. Like, I'm sure you're listening right now, Broken. You're like, oh, yeah, well, then you know, it sounds like stuff in this game. It sounds like stuff in that game. It sounds like stuff in this game. But what sets it apart is when you sit down and you play it and you see. You, I guarantee you, you'll see something that is not in any other game or something that's going to impress you. Well, it, it might not be I the stuff we're bringing up. Just from but, what I've seen, um, I'm impressed by this game just in terms of, of, like, how it plays, the mechanics, the ideas that they use. Like, all this stuff we talked about. This is the stuff that I'm excited for. And, you know, I've caught myself looking at some of these gifts and being like, ah, maybe I'll buy this game. Yeah. But then I go, oh, that's right. I got money for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. worth it. it it's, it's uh, again, it, it's an experience that every gamer needs to have for sure. Well, definitely. I think um, I want to do it right. So I'm going to start with the other story. But what I've been thinking is, is, is more along the lines of how I used to do things where I'm going to focus more on like uh, kind of showing up late to the party with games, but really being able to enjoy them whenever some of the hype has died down. Yeah. Because I think that's what has always been kind of a special thing to me for games is that um, I let everybody have their fun first. They figure out what works and what doesn't. And then I jump in and I say, hey, you know, I, it, this is what I think of it. I agree with what you said, or I think this is a different angle. So I think I'm just going to show up late to the party for this one. But I think I'd like to give it a shot down the road. Hey, well, I think that's definitely worth it. Um, I think that uh, this game has a lot to offer for everybody. Um, there's so much that you could do. I mean, even like sitting down, playing poker or playing a, a, a blackjack, like those things, 
I just like doing that. Sometimes I'll just hop on and just sit there and play, you know, poker for like 30 minutes to an hour, just chilling, doing that. And or, that stuff is great. I mean, I, I would love to get involved in little side things like that mm -hmm. just because it makes the game last a little bit longer. Because, I mean, a lot of people, uh, as a parallel, they, they really got into Gwent. Uh, yeah, and, oh, you know, coming I was from, one uh, of them. I was one of uh, them. <laughs> yeah, going into a, a card game kind of uh, place. I, I love playing Magic the Gathering, but when I got into Gwent, I was like, oh, what is this? Why is this game being forced on me? Um, oh, and wow. it, it turns out that, that like, if you don't play it, you kind of miss out on a lot in the game, yeah. just in terms of just like experience and random stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, like I, 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 I didn't play. I played Gwent the one time I had to, and never went back and never even thought twice. That's crazy. Never, Gwen's never mess with my experience of, of Witcher. No, dude. It's if you think Gwent is off the hook, you got to get into Magic, dude. You're about to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, well, that yeah, that could be, <laughs> that could be. But uh, I I love Gwent though. Gwent's tight to me. I, yeah. just, I thought it was really good. But um, I, again, if you're not a uh, open world game player, I I tell you, you need to experience this game because, um, you know, one thing I can say about it again, it does not hold your hand. Um, you can go and do the missions, you know, the main story missions, and it's very clear on what those missions are. Um, but you don't have to. Um, if you just want, you know, just want to take a slow ride into it as far as just filling out the world and then going into those missions, um, you can. And it, it does pick up, you know, as far as getting harder. Um, and like I said, the game is just a work of art. It's, it's a masterpiece as far as in gaming. And, uh, you know, it's like, um, you know, some people don't like old black and white movies, but Gone with the Wind is still a masterpiece. And huh. it's like on that type of level. Um, you know, I'm a sci-fi guy, Doctor Who, the whole nine yards, but I, I watch masterpieces still and, and take that in and everything that it took to make that film or make that game. And this is one of those ones that will be talked about, you know, for a long time to come. I think so, too. I think it's going to, to definitely leave its mark, not to mention that it's it's just like everybody is so into it right now. I call it the cowboy hype uh, moment. This is the the Western hype. And it's it's because it, it, it definitely we have been lacking in that, you know, for the people who do enjoy those Westerns and whatnot. When was the last time that a good one came out, you know, like in the movies or just was in the culture? Mm. Yeah, I don't Because, I, I mean, I enjoyed the remake of True Grit, which is weird for me because I don't like uh, Westerns. But something about that movie just kind of grabbed my attention. Uh, the Denzel one was cool. What is it? The uh, Magnificent Seven or something like that? Oh, you know what? I should have. I, I wanted to watch that one because it had a definitely like interesting action movie thing going on with it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't catch that one. It, it went under my radar. Yeah. But, um, to, you know, I mean, again, the, the, you know, just, you know, try it, play it you know, watch, you know, do some YouTube and, and watch uh, people do th some of the playthrough, but you might not want to watch too much, especially if you want to do it yourself. Uh, the online is coming uh, pretty soon. I want to say it's mid November or something yeah. around mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, and like I said, you guys can go back and check out uh, X priests uh, prognostications. Oh. Um, uh, because I was talking about how you're going to be able to own property and farms and all that good stuff. And uh, there's the data miners are saying that they found that in the world to where you can actually, you know, own properties and all that good stuff, saloons. And, um, you know, so it's man, I just can't wait. You know, and I'm not. I think rushing. that would be fun. I wouldn't mind being a saloon owner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to look for it, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um That's you know it, it's it, like i said it, it's just uh I, i'm taking my time with it i'm not rushing through it uh, you know i don't online's coming that's cool but i'm still taking my time i'm not trying to you know set a mark and try to just blaze through it and everything else i mean there's everything in this game dude i, I you know this is not a spoiler or whatever but uh this game has some supernatural aspects to it yeah, so, Ooh, spooky. Exactly. Yeah, it does. It's good. All right, that that would be a, a game changer for me. Would be if I had something like that because I really was not looking forward to like some dry western about being an outlaw. Oh no, this game. No, no. Well, no, there's much more. Nor than was that. the first one that way. Um, yeah. this definitely is which not, I haven't played. <laughs> wow, well, that's that's your bad. Hey, we've been telling you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, but no, no, no. It, again, it's all it's hyped up to be. Um, Broke said the cowboy hype is real. It is totally real. This is not hype, first of all. Um, this game will win uh, records uh, beyond its years yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, yeah. people, other developers will be stealing from Rockstar um, about all they, they do in this game and all the nuances 
and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, this is the biggest selling uh, game uh, title in history uh, for the weekend in entertainment period. Um, it did uh, $750 million over one weekend. But check this out. Um, what is the biggest selling game of all time? You guys, do you know the first two days? E- E.T.? <laughs> no. Or, or you know, what? I, I said game, but I mean uh, I- entertainment piece in history as far as oh. movies, uh, music, Grand or Theft Auto games. Five. Uh, Titanic? So would be correct. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V did one billion in two days. But the reason why the 750 million mark was made is because Rockstar did this on purpose. They released this game on a Friday, not a weekday. So the weekend special, it holds the title for the biggest weekend uh, in entertainment history because um, Grand Theft Auto V was released on a Tuesday. And it was during the weekday that it set the $1 billion yep. record. So they hold both records for weekday and weekend. Yep. That might be on the quiz, so you guys uh, make sure you take notes. That might also be on the notes. What? Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you know, hey, I'm just letting you guys know because, um, again, it, it, it's, um, about, it, it's, it's about a title that, to me, surpasses a Western spaghetti, you know, title, what Broke claims that, you know, this is. it Because it, it has so much, it adds so much to... Um, to not 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 just entertainment, not just video games, but just to the whole aspect of everything, from the acting to the storytelling to the music, to the um, to the graphics, um, to uh, pushing these uh, systems uh, to their fullest capabilities. Yes, I know you guys have been screaming it out there. What about HDR? We'll talk about that um, in notes probably. But um, they were screaming that. Yeah, it's been all over the web. But, you oh. know, you got to find that one thing. You know, um, that's wrong with the title. Um, But again, it it still doesn't take away from the game. You can play it in SDR. It makes the colors pop. It brings everything back. You just disengage that on your Xbox. You don't have to disengage it on your TV. Um, It doesn't affect anything else. If you want to put in another title that had to HDR, it takes two clicks to get into the menu. Hit HDR. You're back. Good to go. Um, You'll see whatever HDR logo on your, whether it's your LG or Samsung device, uh, appear again. And uh, you're good to go. But um, hopefully Rockstar will fix that. Um, they've talked about it. And uh, so hopefully it'll be in the next patch. So and that's what I was thinking is, is that there's being an open world game. You always run into the problem of the game colliding with itself. Because uh, I've seen like a video or it was a, a gif of, of uh, the main protagonist falling through the floor and then popping up on the ground again. But he managed to get away from a bounty hunter because of that. Yeah, that th- there is a couple of uh, small little glitches. The only thing I've seen in the game uh, was a bottle floating in midair. But check this out. This is how Rockstar does it. If they're going to do a glitch, they're going to do it well. So the, the so the bottle was floating in midair, a beer bottle. Normally, when you go up to it, you can't touch it. It doesn't move. You do it, whatever. I walked to it. It hit my chest, fell to the ground, and broke. That's pretty funny, actually. Rockstar. It might have been a ghost. That's how they do it. Ooh, opposed to ghost bottle. If, yeah, if it was Fallout, you would have been able to walk either through it. It would have just stayed there to where you could manipulate or do anything fired, with it. The shots fired. Or it would have started spinning endlessly. Exa- exactly. Um, yeah, I have actually yet to see a glitch in my game. We'll, we'll uh, talk cool. about th- we'll talk about that in news as far as um, now. You got Fallout. it for the Xbox or the PlayStation? Xbox, baby, Xbox. all day, every day, full four K. Oh, yeah, yes, full four K. So you need to get it so we can be the EGR posse. Yeah, I remember a time when you guys were team PlayStation. <laughs> no, hey, I, I, I'm. I told you, and you, they can go back and check check it out. Check the podcast <laughs> on um, <laughs> the PS4 Pro, first party titles only. On the Xbox One X, third-party titles. Oh yeah, for sure. So whichever is the 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 the, the best in showing in 4K, I'm going there. So that's that's Priest. Woo! So they do have that Poke Genie app on the iPhone, and I just hey, I had but you have to screenshot all your Pokemon, and I just got Garbage. done screenshotting them. <laughs> so yeah. All right, fellas. <laughs> so let's take a break, and we'll be back with you know what, gaming news. Gaming. It is time for Gaming News. Yeah, let's get into it. So the first piece of news we're going to talk about is what Priest already spoiled for us. 
that Red Dead Redemption 2 achieves the biggest opening weekend in the entertainment history. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2, that's right. Rockstar's newest installment of the Rudy Tootie Cowboy Shooty series uh -huh. <laughs> is uh, smashing records with sales. Pat yourself on the back, Rockstar. You have now have the two top two opening days on record with Red Dead 2 and GTA, which released on a Tuesday. Um, so we kind of already talked about this. You guys have anything else you want to cover with that? No, just go no, out and get it. it. It's it's he put the numbers out there, and that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and um, also uh, we'll talk about Red Dead Online, some of their vehicles, properties uncovered by data miners. Those sneaky data miners. Uh, data man, data miners at Rockstar Intel have located files that seem to describe vehicles and properties that you'll be able to buy um, uh, when Red Dead Online launches sometime this month. That's right. We're already in November. Um, as you can probably guess, there aren't any cars on Red Dead Online, but the multiplayer version of the exceedingly popular cowboy game will trade Grand Theft Auto's knockoff Lambos for carts, coaches, and wagons. Uh, there's everything from a simple house cart to a standard coach to a chuck wagon equipped with a Gatling gun that says Wells Fargo on the side. As far as breeds of nice. horses available in Red Dead Online, data miners found the Hungarian half-breed, the Missouri Fox Trotter, the Turkoman, and the Dutch Warmblood, and hopefully some fire and ice horses because you know how we love those. Um, what do you guys think about that? Oh, it's going to be amazing, man. I, I can imagine because, again, GTA Five they have so much in that game. It's mm -hmm. been going on. Um, it, it's what's kept that game alive for all these years, uh, period. So I can't wait to see what plans they have for Red Dead Online. I am looking for the troll horses and vehicles. Yeah, oh, they, they should, they should be there. I mean, they should be there. I don't see why. Because, I mean, they had it in GTA Five. You know, like you can get like a scooter or you could have like a, like a garbage ride. Um, yeah, they probably have like a, sort of, like you're gonna get like a burrow or something. Yeah, like a donkey, something yeah. like that. You know. Yeah. Um, do you think they'll have like events, kind of like along oh, the lines sure. of like Fortnite stuff or something? You know, where it's like, oh, this is the undead event for Halloween. That's or... all GTA Online is is events. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, is it? I mean, I haven't really dig or dug too much into it, but it seems like GTA is more like packs than events. Like they just release like like quests and whatnot. No, there's a bunch of things you have to actually you know get with group and uh start a you know mm. um doing the whole tron thing doing the you know the uh hot wheels thing or whatever loop to loops or whatever yeah those those are probably my favorite stuff. ones the uh the, the little stunt car uh races and then eventually they, they made the transformers ones where you could switch between different vehicles yeah yep yep so so again i can't imagine where they're going with um red debt based upon you only dealing with that western and western world yeah that's so true they probably Probably should be able to add a lot of different stuff, so yeah, that'll be really cool. Yep. Um, before we leave Red Dead Redemption, this is not in our notes, but I know Priest wanted to talk about the HDR and um, how to fix that. So there's some, there's been some problems with the HDR. It's not a true HDR on both the PlayStation and the Xbox. Um, it's kind of some sort of simulated HDR that unfortunately washes out the screen yeah. and degrades the colors. Uh, so, Priest, if you want to talk about how you fix that. Yeah, what you want to do is on the uh, Xbox or the PS4, you want to go ahead and go into settings, go into uh, your display, and then you're going to see that button, whatever says HDR off, and you just go ahead and click that, turn it off. Um, and again, doesn't affect your... Um, your uh, what is it? Your menu, mm -hmm. your um, Xbox menu at all. Um, go into the game, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's actually going to look amazing. It brings back all the colors, all the pop, the snow to the. Uh, there, there's one uh, scene or whatever, they have the um, um, author on a hill and they have the sunset behind them, and you see that big glow of the sun, of the sun just uh, setting. Um, and it looks just like that now because you'll be able to get that vibrant uh, color back to your game. Um, so until they fix it, um, all the um, main, um, uh, what is it, uh, video guys, yeah. TV guys, they were like, turn it off. I mean, we did all the calibrations or whatever. It looks freaking stunning. It looks amazing. They suggest until Rockstar fixes that to turn it off. So um, and I did, off. and it looks amazing. Turn it off. Turn it off. 
Um, and I'm sure Rockstar is going to be on top of that soon. They're not one to uh, disappoint the fans. Yeah, no, they said there um, the, are uh, fixes on the way. Okay, perfect. So let's get into uh, Priest's new favorite game, dun, 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 dun. Uh, Anthem. That he he is now a Sith supporter. So uh, always been. Anthem the Dark Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Anthem developer Livestream showcases new features. Anthem pokes its head out amidst all of the Western hysteria to deliver what could be some of the most promising information in a recent live stream. Anthem developer showcased its new features and helped keep the hope alive for what many think may be the death rattle for BioWare. Um, so you guys want to talk about some of the things you saw in this live stream because I just caught a portion of it um, and I was like, OK, I'm going to let broke start this off. Ooh. All right. <laughs> um, my feelings One of the on haters. this game are uh, it could be a lot of fun with the right people. That's one thing is that I'm not just going to jump in with anybody if I get into this, but visually stunning. I am about how this game looks. Um, the, you're right, the verticality makes a huge difference, and being able to fall through the sky in between some ravines and then go into the water and just have all the transition effects happen, it, it is very immersive, it is very beautiful, it is lush, the particle effects are there, um, and I'm in love with that part of the game. But for the mechanics, I'm still a little, eh, like I'm getting a Destiny Warframe vibe from it, which could just be me looking at, at it too much as a big picture, but it could be something different. I mean, the game is only in alpha right now, so they could make some tweaks to make it more appealing, but uh, I went from like a, you know, in terms of, of heat on a one to 10 scale, I was at like a three. Now I'm at like a good six or seven about this game. So we'll see, we'll see where this goes. Okay, first of all, uh, just like Soul, you coined it as trash at some point in time. I did not call it uh, trash. I just <laughs> called it a minion of the Dark Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, um, you are a Warframe fan, so that's, that's funny right. to hear talking about us like Warframe, meaning that's actually good if you're a fan of a game that it is um, good. I mean, if I have to make the choice between this game and Warframe, what do you think I'm gonna pick? You're gonna pick <laughs> you're gonna pick Anthem. Um, no, what? but uh yeah, yeah. Um it, 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 and the only reason you probably won't is because you gotta pay for it. Ooh, but right. um, <laughs> say you ain't got no bucks. Uh, broke gamer <laughs> got zero uh, bucks. Uh, we, actually, we have we might have to change that or whatever. But you're yeah, still he's not frugal. Broke no more. You're not broke no more. But he's still frugal. No, with but how I got a spend. broke soul, man. Okay, there oh. you go. It's all, no, it's always good just to be frugal. But um, so check this out. I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh oh. Everything that I thought this game would be, it is right on right on time and right on right on scale. Oh, right um, as on. far as the verticality is amazing, Preach. the how you control in the air is stunning. Mm. I mean, if whoever's going to do Superman, look at this game for their flight control, the movement of the character from the fingers to the legs. And again, metal suit um, still looks utterly unbelievable. Yeah, as like far I, as I might break your heart with this, man, but I'm thinking of getting it for the PC uh, oh, because by then dude, I should have an upgraded broke, uh, no. graphics card. Broke, you would not be breaking my heart. If anything, I might come over and have to check it out. Because yeah, that's the I thing, know, man. This yeah. game just looks so good. And this yes, was just on a 1080p stream. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. And um, no, it, it's probably making me think about a PC, but I don't know. Because hey. I'm not going to think about a PC only because one thing, Broke, you got the Xbox 2 and the PS5, baby. It's all That's good. true, but that's that's far away. Remember, my predictions are at least a year to two years from now. Okay, just to tell fans out there straight up. Um, PS5 is coming out next year. Um, the uh, Xbox Two is coming out in uh, twenty uh, twenty. So oh, I don't nice. I don't care what Broke is saying. No no PlayStation experience shut down because again um, they're waiting to uh, launch it. Um, I mean launch it next year with yeah. the PS5. They're focusing their key so that they can master the spirit bomb that is the PS5. Exactly. Super um, Saiyajin Godo. Last of Us. <laughs> Everything you saw at E3 that was shown by PlayStation will be on, except for um, which was pushed back days gone, um, will be on the uh, PS5. Just just to let you guys know, 
That's why everything's happening with Sony the way it's happening. They can't even compete with Red Dead. Um, Red Dead PS4 doesn't hold a candle. It's, it, it's in, Have you seen a comparison video? It, yeah, there? it's like I a. They, they can even call it faker, fake check, checkerboarding, Ooh. which is weird. They, said, it, they said it's a fake, fake four. Yeah, deep. Yeah, they can't. It, it just can't keep up or whatever. I mean, you know, if you have it, play it. You know, it is what it is, but it's a great game. Still looks good, um, but it looks better on the on the Xbox. Just like if uh, um, Broke gets Anthem on the uh, PC. Um, it's, it's going to be freaking amazing. But again, I will definitely challenge uh, the PC with the Xbox 2 or the PS5 because stability and um, overall visuals, um, visuals um, and uh, because there's a lot of games that come out on the um, on the PC that's not built for it because, again, you have to build for that wide gambit for the PC so it's not stable. Um, so, uh, but as far as, you know, textures and adding all kind of stuff that people put into the game that you could do on the PC, that's one benefit of it. But, um, as far as stability and just overall visuals and stable frame rate, I would still go with the higher end, uh, Xbox two and the PS five. For uh, sure. Uh, for, I mean, if you, if you go with the, uh, the PC, uh, you're at your own risk. I mean, there's no warranty Basically. here unless you paid for some extra stuff. You could blow out your rig doing some really weird stuff with your uh, with your PC. Meanwhile, the Xbox, you, you might get a red ring, you might get something weird, but you can just send that in and get another one uh, as long as you didn't open it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so yeah, but but Anthem is looking freaking fantastic. Watch the um, Twitch stream. I believe it happened on Saturday. Yep. Um, it, it, it freaking looks amazing. I liked um, all the, uh, the different missions that were in the game, how they were able to set off um, all kind of different um, different aspects of aggro um abilities as far as there was only two um um what are they called uh, not warframes but they're called uh, <laughs> uh, uh the, 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 the exosuits oh exosuits. god why am i no, blanking ex- on that no, now? I, I the, like no there's an actual name for it i thought it's yeah yeah there's a name for them uh, well or... let's just insert random yeah. name here yeah and yeah. uh <laughs> But, yeah, no, um, those there's there's just four of them that that we know of so far, and yeah. uh, I remember that the storm was kind of a mystery, so it was impressive that they actually opened with that in the live stream. Exactly, and man, um, but they were able just those two characters were able to take on a lot just by I don't working know about together. Able. Those dudes were having some trouble. Oh no, they they were having trouble because there were two, and they set off two different missions within one. So that they was were, at the beginning, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Even yeah. Then when they went to the later mission, uh, when they were dealing with the brutes or whatever they call them, that they were getting kind of uh, they're getting beat up. Yeah, no, no, they were, um, um, they were, they were holding their own though. Um, I just yeah, like yeah, how fair enough. they they definitely knew what they were doing. Um, and the 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 gameplay styles looked very different, which is something that yes. I like. Is that I don't want a lot of like crossover in between different uh, skins, exosuits. God, I can't remember what they're called. I forgot too. Um, javelins, 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 yeah, javelins. That's why I said spear. Yeah. So the yeah. javelins, uh, I I like that they're well defined. There's not a whole lot of them. You know, it isn't like Warframe where you're just basically drowning in them. Yeah, but what they do, they do well. And so that's what's impressive about what's going on there. Because I, I, as soon as I saw the final moves and all the stuff for the uh, the uh, Interceptor, I was like, that's me. I want that. I want to do that. Yep, yep. It was like a praying mantis. Yeah, see, see Red Dead would have got him if there was a flying, uh, you know, character. And <laughs> Yeah, if there was like a magic cowboy that shoots lasers or something, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm in. I don't know, man. It might be uh, in online. Uh. But, uh, but anyways... Um, Anthem is looking great. Uh, it's in the alpha build and it looks amazing. Um, because let's talk about some alphas and some betas. Uh, f- have you guys seen Fallout seventy six? Did you play it? I played it. And it Did was you tr- play that pile of trash? It was a trash Did bag. Did you play that? I don't want to touch it. Freaking recreation of Fallout four, uh, 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 add on that was not released during Fallout four, which it should have been. It was probably made for because they're using the same assets, the same game code. Um, a little bit cleaner graphics, um, but again, still trash. The mm-hmm. freaking beta was trash. Um, it, it, unreal. I mean, th- that should be you're talking about free titles. That should be a free release title if anybody cares to play it. I mean, straight hot garbage. I mean, I, I just cannot believe the um, or audacity for them to put out um, this game like it was going to be something big because even what they showed at uh e3 was so uh freaking controlled and uh looked way better than um what was played there were so many glitches again classic fallout glitches um that should not be and again i told so i told uh, you know everybody on this podcast i was like putting fallout in an open world and the bugs that are in the regular game the part that you are supposedly able to control the single player aspect and then you're going to put it online and everybody can do whatever can you imagine 
and it was the hot mess that everybody thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. So um, my prediction for that game is going to tank. It's going to probably um, set them back big time, period. Man, dude, go rent a um, a game engine. Please go rent a game engine. I mean, well, you, you a, can get it from the garbage. A little peek behind the curtain if I could. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I listened to a podcast recently where they talked about Fallout, the series itself. And so I kind of have a pretty good understanding of where it came from and what's going on now. And the issue is that their game engine is built specifically for the type of game that it is. And it would take a massive amount of resources and time to be able to build a new one because they've just been Frankensteining the same game exactly. engine since three. Exactly. And that's a freaking excuse. Um, because, again, like Rockstar, take the time off to freaking uh, get it right. Um, they didn't even do Vegas or whatever. There was another um, yeah, that game was developer. Yeah, Obsidian, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that did Vegas, whatever. They could have took the time to come up with a new engine, buy an, buy an engine, use, a, use Unreal Engine. You know, you, that, that's that's a that's his freaking excuse. And don't have me. Oh, they want to have the fallout old school look. You can have the fallout old school look, old school, old school look. Can we say Red Dead 2? Can you go look at that game and tell me something looks modern in it? I mean, come on. So you still can have that look or whatever with a better engine and better texture quality and freaking uh, more stable um, system. You know, period. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But, well, but, but they tried to upcycle uh, an old concept because I've, I've been hearing a lot of rumors about how this was supposed to be attached to 4 and it just wasn't ready in time for the release of 4. So they just kind of threw it back inside of the microwave and kept hitting nuke on it. And now it's exactly. all gross and rubbery. Yep, yep, yep. And, and it's just it's just ridiculous. I mean, if anything, this should have been a $20 add-on to Fallout, um, period. For I mean, sure. This would have made Fallout 4 a way better game. Yeah. But by itself, new. No. Exactly. No thanks. Exactly. So I'm good. Anyways, that is done. Uh, Get not, that out of here. not getting the helmet. Not buying the collector's edition. I don't care. It's. Uh, I've already got it out of my cart. Deleted it. Canceled my order. Called it a day. So any, any thoughts on that, Soul? Um, I kind of don't even really want to talk about it because it's really bad, and I'm <laughs> very, very disappointed because yeah, because both Bethesda- of you were, were pretty upset that you couldn't get your hands on. Or actually, no, it was specifically Soul. You couldn't get your hands on a copy of the special edition. Yeah. Uh, because of that Best Buy shenanigans. Yeah, so, I mean, and I would have been real, real pissed that I've been paying $400 a week to hold on to that thing. So, uh, it's just like, um, I, I was, you know, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say. I'm very disappointed in Bethesda. It's one of my favorite gaming developers or, or uh, producers or whatever. And um, I, I just, you know, that, that was kind of like, really? You, you hyped it all up and this was your whole thing for E3 to talk about this and it's not good. It, and it's not even really not good. It's like, it's really, really bad. And it, yeah. and I understand that it's a beta, but um, pretty much everybody, that's like the consensus around the gaming community is like, it's not good. So yeah, nowadays, it's not just betas. us hating on it. It's just like everybody didn't like it. So yeah, it, it's yeah. it's not even alpha. It's not even an omega. It's, it's, it's coming out in two weeks. I mean, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying is, is that betas nowadays when they open them up for most people, it's the game. That's yeah. it. They just have to balance it out and deal with the server. So if this is what they're giving us, I'm going to need like a Game of Thrones shame none shame sound shame. right here for them because like shame, shame on you, Bethesda. Shame. This is yeah. not how you should do things. And you know better than that. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, that was definitely disappointing. So. Yeah, but uh, let's see. Moving on to the next uh, notes here, and I accidentally pulled them down because I was catching a Pokemon. But that's here we go, love, right? <laughs> uh, Nintendo announces Mario Kart Tour on the uh, a smartphone game, and uh, Nintendo confirmed Naruto Kart Tour on Twitter, adding that the game is in development and is expected to be released sometime in the next fiscal year which ends in March 2019. Nintendo describes the game as a mobile application but isn't releasing any more information at this time. So, Man, uh, what Nintendo is so weird about their stuff because uh, they, they, they keep it locked. They don't really tell you what's coming down the pipelines. I guess they have like a superior gag order or something. Yeah, no, um, I, I don't know. It's kind of like... Uh, Okay, well, we'll see how it's going to go. Yeah, I don't even know um, what to say. You guys have been having a lot of online problems, so I don't know. Are we just going to be playing Mario Kart on our phones against NPCs? Like, what are we going to be doing? 
Reggie's brushing his hair right now. He doesn't even know what's going on. So <laughs> He's got one of those brushes that you can slip your fingers into and just go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I used to have one of those when I had my hair shorter. It was great. Oh, man, that is funny. That is funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But let's get to some really good Nintendo news. All right. um, yeah. Um, let me see here. My phone keeps locking on itself, which is awesome. So uh, we're going to talk about Smash Brothers. That's right. Uh, Smash, Final Smash, which um, they just had a, a Nintendo Direct a few days ago. Uh, Final Smash Ultimate Nintendo Direct brings the rest of the game into the spotlight. We've got three new characters, and I'm just going to sum them up quite a bit here. Um, we've got Ken, uh, hailing from the Street Fighter series. He is Ryu's uh, eternal rival. Um, he is better than Ryu. He fights better Lies. than Ryu. He Lies. hits better than harder than Ryu. He has better moves than Ryu. He's better than Ryu. And um, this is the Ken based <laughs> on the appearance from Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, he has a similar but better move set than Ryu, and uh, he's slightly faster, and he has a different shaped Hadouken in the Smash Brothers games, which is cool. Um, we've got Incineroar, um, who apparently has escaped his Pokeball and is wrestling everybody on the screen. That's right. Um, he is um, an advanced evolution of Litten, who made his first appearance in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Incineroar uses pro wrestling moves to uh, beat Cakes. Um, they have a new feature. They're taking away, what was it, the trophies, I believe it was? Uh, yeah, they're yeah. taking away the trophy system, which, I mean, it was kind of weird anyways, because if you played the first two games, didn't do a whole lot, mm -hmm. and they tried to do something with them and stickers in the third game. Fourth mm -hmm. game, they just kind of went like, eh, you can have them if you want them. Right. And now, now they're just going away. So, spirits. Uh, in the world of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, many video game characters lose their forms and become spirits that serve as a sort of a power-up for the player's main playable fighter. This is a massive number of wildly different spirits, ranging from Chibi-Robo to Dr. Willy to Tails to Revolver Ocelot, with a giant list of characters going on and on and on. Uh, players can equip a primary and support spirits to power up or add additional abilities like speed or strength. Uh, to their fighter during the battles. Mixing and matching spirits will help players get the upper hand against certain opponents, adding quite a bit of strategy to battles. Equipping a spirit is similar to equipping a charm or an accessory in an RPG. It's a way for players to enjoy a massive amount of additional video game characters outside of selecting them as playable fighters. Spirit battles. The main way to acquire a spirit is to win a spirit battle. After winning spirit battles, the players will have to complete a roulette of challenges to acquire that spirit. Leveling up spirits. Um, you can level up your spirits by battling with spirits by their side. Uh, players can level up spirits, giving them extra power and sometimes unlocking enhanced form of the spirit. Uh, the more leveled up and trained spirits are, the powerful and use the more powerful and useful they are. Uh, well, spirit combinations. With an insane amount of spirits in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, thousands of combinations can be formed. Players will be constantly surprised and excited by all the spirits that pop up in the game because players might collect an abundance of spirits. The game will offer recommendations for primary and support spirits, making the selection process a little bit easier. And with DLC, new fighters, new stages, and music will be coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate through... Through the end of February 2020, in the form of paid DLC, for only $5.99 for the rest of your life, players can purchase <laughs> one set. Dang. Just kidding, not for the rest of your life. For only $5.99, players can purchase one set, which includes a new playable fighter, not an Echo Fighter, a stage, and a variety of music. By purchasing a fighter pass for only $24.99, players will get access to five yet to be announced sets uh, which include five new fighters fight uh, five stages and multiple music tracks as they release players who purchase a fighter's pass will uh, also receive in-game outfit based on rex from xenoblade chronicles 2 starting december 7th pre-purchasing the digital version of the game with the fighter's pass and nintendo eShop or nintendo.com before 11 59 on december 6th We'll earn my Nintendo members 425 gold points or use double the usual, usual amount. Excuse me. The bonus points will be issued on the game's launch day. That is a lot of information. Oh, there's more. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Early purchase bonus. The piranha plant takes root. The That's I- right. The iconic enemy from that the Super funny. Mario series is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for early purchasers. Players can use the digital version of the game or register their physical version of the game on Nintendo Switch device by January 31st, 2019 to gain access to this new fighter when it is available February 2019. At no additional cost, Piranha Piranha Plant, together with a new stage music track, will be available for purchase as DLC in the future. Fans can pre-purchase the game and secure the Piranha Plant reward. Wow, that was a lot of information that I wrote and you read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, basically, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do in this new uh, Super Smash Brothers game. So that's that's pretty tight, <laughs> I have to say. Um, it's not just about you know beating the story mode or or um, you know uh, waiting for your friends to come over to play with you. Like you can really really hone your skills doing other challenges and getting spirits and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Well, that's what was such a big deal for me because I remember I was having like flashbacks because Melee was the big one for me. That was the one where I just went deep with it and I, I got all of the characters, I beat all of the modes, and I got all of the trophies as well too. Yeah. And hearing that there's going to be spirits, mm-hmm. that they do something, that uh, you have mini games that you play with the spirits. So uh, if anybody remembers, there were like special event matches that you had to do for Pokemon. And as you went through them, you could unlock characters that way as well too. Well, spirits are kind of like that. Yeah, where right, right. Uh, some sometimes an enemy that you fight will have a spirit that makes them invisible. Sometimes you have to fight multiples of the same enemy. You know, it's a bunch of different interesting battles with imposed rules that make the game just that much more fun. Yeah, no, or frustrating depending on who you are. Right. Yeah, and I, and I'm wondering too, like, so those spirits that you can use, like, let's say, let's take for for example, the invisible one. Is that going to make you invisible the whole match? Because that's kind of tough to to defend. I would I would think. Well, I mean, if you, you know remember I mean? again back to melee days, they introduced the special melee uh, format, and invisible fights were one of the options. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, so it's 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 depends on how good of a player you are. Yeah, you know, if you know where true. your character is at all times and you can follow the dust clouds, you're fine. But if you go invisible and you just start falling off of the edges, uh, that's that's kind of on you. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Um, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. It's it's gonna be really really cool. I, I like the new aspect of the spirits. I like that you can get yeah. one main spirit and have supporting spirits, and it, it basically makes every fighter different. So like if you're, let's say you like Mario and I like Mario. You know, we're not just going to be using the same Mario. We're going to yeah, be using it, a different Yeah, it turns variation. out that my style of Mario is edge guard and down smash Mario. So I focus on those abilities and I power them up so that whenever I pull off those combos, they're ridiculously powerful. Yeah, Meanwhile, exactly. You could be more of like a like a cape and like a uh, up like smash an uppercut or something, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. and you could mm-hmm. set up for that. Yeah. So it just it depends on, on what your style is. Yeah. is. You're going to do more of that because I know that my favorite character is Captain Falcon. And it's only because he has this move called the knee of death, mm. which mm-hmm. if you pull it off right, it can kill somebody below 100 percent. And it's it's damn near unstoppable. I've seen people get hit by it after the move's been deflected. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, um, my, my favorite uh, character is Pikachu. It used to be Kirby, but then I don't know. I just got tired of using Kirby. So um, Pikachu is pretty legit. I think the the only issue that I have with Pikachu is that uh, his toolkit for movement can get him killed a yeah. lot. Yeah, that's the only thing. Specifically his up yeah. move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful with that because yeah. I mean they've added some extra stuff to it where you you can be more deliberate and they've slowed it down. But uh, yeah, Pikachu is, is is a pretty aggressive play, especially because you can trigger those uh, lightning attacks mm-hmm. uh, in the middle of your combo. It's it's a setup. You can even make it so it doesn't hit you. Yeah. Exactly. But what's cool is uh, after the third game, they made it so that if you are touching, which is a pretty big mechanic inside of most Smash games, if you're touching another character when you get hit by lightning, it turns into a home run bat hit. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah. a pretty cool way to play as well, too. Yeah, no, um, but I, I have a feeling with all these characters, I'm probably going to pick a new character for the new game that I like. I think so as well, home. too. There's there's going to be a massive rebalancing because yeah. uh, that's they, they broke my heart when they did that from 2 to 3, uh, from Melee to, to Brawl because they, they completely changed the toolkit on Falco, and he was my main. Yeah. And yeah. that stopped right away because the thing is that he has uh, he's a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, they uh, they they made it so he kicks his shield away, which was uh, his shield was a big part of his combos in the second game. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of kept that; they didn't go with it. So I think I'm going to try to main Wolf, which I, I put a lot of time into oh, when he came wow. out. So I, I might get some time with Wolf. 
that's cool. That's cool. I I haven't picked one yet. I'm gonna play with all the characters, see who I really like, and and yeah. uh, what what well, moveset feels. One like. thing that, that that'll be cool for both of us is that now they have like a ranked duel uh, thing, so we could start playing together mm-hmm. uh, versus uh, two other people at the same time. Oh, that's and really it, tight. it's you could uh, gain GSP, which is like the global ranking system. Like, there's a lot in the background for this game. Oh, that's that gonna be sick. They prepared for, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. you can even become like an elite gamer, where basically they use your stats to figure out. Um, what they need to nerf and what needs to be reworked. All right. Uh, spe- well, now we know what we got to do, bro. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you want to start grinding that out, that's one game that I've always been serious about. So yeah. uh, I oh, know yeah. that like the Smash scene's pretty heavy, but I've noticed that a lot of the uh, the melee players are the ones that that uh, get super into like frame rates and need specific monitors. But yeah. like this new one will probably be more geared towards um towards more like. Uh, What's there, not what is. What yeah, was, I not, guess. not what was. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I feel. I feel like it's gonna pretty much wipe the slate clean for any of your smash moves that you kind of remember. Or, you know, the little t- quirks and stuff that you could do. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and I mean, I, I hope for that because the thing is that I listened to a podcast where they talked about the uh, the background of the game and deliberately. I mean, some of you will remember they added the tripping mechanic inside of the third game yeah. specifically to slow down professional players mm-hmm. because the dude who invented Smash didn't want it to be a professional competitional game. Yeah. He wanted it to be a party game like Mario Party. Yeah. And so he introduced a bunch of random elements to make it so that you couldn't just be dominating the whole time. Yeah. And I think that they're moving away from that and kind of easing up on the competitive uh, circuit because they did actively try to shut down a bunch of uh, melee competitions back in the day. Mm, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. It's 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 a game I'm passionate about, and I'm glad to see that they're so doing this right. So you think it'll? Right. You think it's gonna kind of be in the middle of a competitive and party game at the same time? Then now, uh, it can be. I mean, that's the thing is that whenever I play with my friends, uh, a good way to have fun with them is to uh, turn up all the items, make the frequency as high as possible, and then uh, turn on the um, uh, the handicap on yourself. Yeah. So that after a few matches, their hits deal more damage to you, and people feel like what they're doing matters more than just showing up and just strategically picking off the weakest enemies and then taking out the stronger ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it, it just depends on how you want to play it, but the uh, the items have always made it a very interesting game for me. I love playing items with groups, uh, but usually no item solitary stage with no platforms whenever I'm doing solo. Yeah, um... Uh, I mean, it, it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. Even if I'm not the best player at it, I still like playing that game. It's it's always super fun. So. Well, you surprise me whenever we play games, man. You've got some pretty good skills in general. Yeah, Super Smash Bros. is not one of the games where I have pretty good skills. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, well, um, but, yeah. one thing that I can do for you is just show you some of the methodology. Because just like I was talking about IV stats and whatnot for Pokemon, mm-hmm. um, there there are you know priority moves, moves that work better, specific combos that you want to do at certain times. So oh, once you get that, yeah. like like filed down to just a, a like a laser sharp point um that's that's when you know where you're at uh, yeah. otherwise it's just have fun with it man that's the thing is that i want to play this game with other people because other people enjoy it for different reasons yeah no i'll definitely be, be uh jamming on it myself that is for sure um yes. that is for sure so um in the middle of uh, our uh, super smash brothers talk we lost uh priest because he had some other Stuff he was gonna go do really quick, and and uh, our our time ran a little long on on our end. <laughs> so, so it's just us. We're going to wrap the show right here. Yeah, Thank we're gonna guys. wrap the show going right up. here, right now. Thank you for everybody showing up and listening. <laughs> um, we uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's good to be back. So I'm I'm glad we we're able to get back on schedule and stuff and and get cracking. All right. So that is Soul Acoustic. This is Broke Ether Gamer Radio. Peace. Peace. Thanks for listening. For more information on the show, go to our website, ethergamerradio.com. You can always catch us on our Facebook fan page. You can hit us up on Twitter or our hosting site, Podbean. Hit us up on iTunes and drop us a review. It helps get the word out to other gamers, so spread the love. As always, we would love to hear from you. Hit us up on Ether Gamer Radio Hotline, 916 916- 877-5745 Until next time, stay gaming.